In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to import 3D text into Nuke and manipulate it using some shaders and other 3D techniques and nodes. Okay, so what I want to do is just jump over here kind of to the side and I'm going to bring in a read geo node just like we did earlier when we read in our robot geometry. And then I'll jump in here to my uh, file browser and I'm just going to choose the innerworld.obj. And then let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm just going to hit the one key to hook my viewer up there. And you can see kind of what this text looks like. Really cool. So um, I'm going to be creating sort of a bit of text that's going to look like kind of the text you might see before, um, like in a trailer, and then it would fade into your next shot. Um, so hence the famous in a world uh, verbiage. So let's go ahead and add some other 3D nodes just like we have before. So we're going to need our scene. So I'll add that and we'll plug our, um, our OBJ into the scene. I'm also going to need a camera. And I'll plug that into my scene as well. And I'm going to be using the ray render node, just like we learned about earlier. So we'll add that. And my object will go, or scene will go in there, and my camera here. And then I'm just going to add a constant as my background, just a black constant. Okay. And now let's go ahead and view this um, in the 2D. So instead of just going, you know, straight over there, I want to show you the wipe functionality. So I'm going to just choose wipe and you can see that, let's come over here and view the ray render. Uh, nothing is actually happening. And that's because right now that, that geometry is just sitting in darkness. There's no texture, no, no nothing. So I need to add a, uh, a, some sort of a material or shader node to that. So let's come over here to our 3D and go into shader. And I want to add the reflection shader. So we'll just plug that in right there. And then I need to tell it wh what to reflect. So I think it would be really cool to add reflections from our original um, footage here. So now we have that hooked in. Um, but our camera right now is also in the wrong place. That's another reason why we couldn't see anything before. So what's really cool is I can, I can come in here and I can kind of rotate around and move. But then I can see the results, the rendered results here in the in the 2D. And I can also kind of rotate this around and I can begin to see, you know, what that looks like. So I know that my camera is up still way too close. So let's move that back a significant amount. And it's still kind of going off screen there. So keep going. And that's getting a little better, maybe right about there. And then it's also still a little too high. So I'd like to kind of raise my camera up so that my text keeps moving down. Now that looks pretty good right there. So if we go full 2D, um, that's right there in the middle. That looks really, really nice. So um, we're able to, you know, add text really quickly um, using using this method. Now, if we wanted to actually transform the text, we could add a transform geonode, or we could just move the camera kind of depending on how we want things to move. Um, but I also think it would be really nice to add a light. So Let's come in here. I'm going to hit tab and add a light. And we'll just plug that into the scene. And as I start moving this light around, we don't really see a huge um, change. Now that is because if I come in here to, to the 2D, you're going to be able to see better. Um, two reasons really. First of all, we couldn't see much of a change anyway with our ray render setting so low. So I'm going to crank up my samples to about 15 and that helps a little bit. But even then, if I disable and re-enable re the light, 
we don't see a big difference. And that's because right now we only have the reflection shader there. So let's go ahead and add some other shaders. And that's what I, I love about using shaders for, for text like this. And you can build a bunch of them up on top of each other. So we could add a Fong shader. And you can see immediately now we're getting the light from our... Um, from, from the light that we've added and it's it's being used uh, with this Fong shader. So now when I go into the light and I change the intensity, we can see that updating. Pretty neat. Um, and then also we could add something maybe like ambient occlusion so that you know these little areas right here get a little bit of shadowing in them and you can just continue to build those up um, and, and have lots of different types of, of um, those, those typical things you'd expect in a 3D package you can just be adding on here in your shaders. So what I'd like to do is maybe add some keys. So I think it would be nice to, um, for, the, for the light to increase the intensity over time. So let's start out at zero where, you know, that we, this is very highly reflective, but maybe slightly hard to read. So we can just key the intensity there on the first frame. And then let's go forward um, to, you know, right in there about 180 frames. And we'll increase our intensity to one. And you can see that, you know, this is more readable now, um, but we can still see those reflections um, from before. Now with a light, you can also kind of play around with what surfaces are getting those reflections. So maybe we kind of start here on the, on the side for the position of the light. So in our X translate, I can set a key there. And then as we move forward, we can move this over here to the other side. So you can kind of see what that does over time if I just kind of come in here and hit play for you. Not only are we increasing the intensity and the, the footage that we're using as the reflection is animated, but also this little highlight um, in here is, is changing over time as well. You may need to go back up just a little further to, to really be able to see that change. There we go. Now it's updating in real time. So just kind of a nice little, a nice little uh, effect over time that we can get. And then you could, you could set something up where you'd be, tr you could transition from this little scene that we've created relatively quickly here. Um, and, and then be transitioning that into the next piece of footage, which I think would, would mesh really nicely since we're using that footage as our reflection. So there's a lot of things you can do with the 3D nodes and Nuke, and I encourage you to play around with some more of these shaders and really find out what you can do with 3D inside of Nuke. So that about wraps it up for this module. Um, let's move on to our next module, module seven, where we're going to be bringing this whole thing together with effects.